Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to One Mike Night. Today, my guest is an actress and producer, among many things. She's going to knock your socks off. She is incredible. Please stick around. Her name is Juliette Amwa. She has a new film coming out. It's called Perfect Attention. You've already heard the episode with the writer and director, but her story is equally as good. So stay tuned. This is One Mic Night. You know who I am? It's Marco Luis. Stick around. Coming at you. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome back to One Mic Night, the podcast that brings you stories of artists and people on their journey, helping to guide, answer questions, and motivate you in life and the business. You already know who I am. It's Marco Solis, and I'm back today. And I want to thank you guys all for liking and subscribing and leaving comments down below, because you know if you do, it helps people find the podcast better. It's not only a podcast, but I think this is more of a talk show now because we do so many things here. We have One Mic Night Talk with psychotherapist Shane Mark Tull, as well as other therapists, relationship coaches, and things like that. So you already know I'm here to bring you some value and some interesting stories that inspire you. So thank you for joining me. My guest today, I'm very, very happy about, she is here. She is an actor. Tris. She's a producer, and her name is Juliet Amwa. Please welcome her to the show. How are you doing, Juliet? Hi, thank you so much for <laughs> having me. This is so cool. I love it. I it's love, love, love what you're doing. This is my dope. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, love it. Love it. Listen, I have questions. Let's get into it. The first question <laughs> is, who is Juliet Amwa? Ooh, I love that question. That's such a good one. Um, I definitely think Juliette Amois is a very cultivated, um, crafted person, mm. right? Um, I think above all, I have so many layers of who I am as a creative, right? I do think that I'm um I'm a daughter, I'm a friend, I'm an actress, I'm a Christian, I'm a, you know, um, a creative person that I think God has given me a lot of talents to be able to use that in that space. Um, so I think aside from all of those things, I think me also being an African woman is also very important to me and being a creative and being able to be in this space. I definitely think um, all those things in a mix and pot kind of create who Juliet Amois is. So it's it's very hard to just maybe pinpoint one thing, but above all, I would definitely say I'm a Christian creative. I'm an African woman and I'm super excited to just continue on with all the great things that God has in store for me. So, yeah. I love that. I love it. I love every bit of it. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> wow, we, uh, yeah, that's a lot. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's back it up just a little bit because you say you're an African woman. Where, where did you grow up and where are you yeah. from? And Right. So my parents are from Ghana, which is in West Africa. Um, and I was originally born in London. So um, my parents were born in Ghana, obviously raised us in London. And then we moved to the Bronx, New York, when I was a little girl. And I was obviously raised the latter part of my life um, in New York City. So I do think um, <clears throat> what's interesting is that I have like a nice mixing pot of cultures, right? like yeah. the African culture, a little bit of the British culture, and of course the New York Bronx culture. So it's just like really cool to kind of just have all those, you know, cultures that kind of just make up who I am and how I was brought up and, you know, just my whole outlook on life. So let me tell you, let me, or let me ask you. So being from, uh, being a foreigner and yeah. having grown up here, I know the first generation parents oh. are not always oh. the supportive ones in what we do Creative. Mm -hmm. How was mm -hmm. that for you? 
That's such a great question. And I love that, that question because I do think it was um it was a challenge, right? In the beginning, I do think my parents, by the grace of God, are super supportive. They're super loving. But what do you mean? You're going to school to do what? Like, you know, go and be a doctor. Go and be, <laughs> like, you know, like we didn't bring you to this America for you to just be dancing on stage and doing acting and whatever, whatever, you know. And so I definitely like begged my parents to put me in theater classes. And, and I felt like my mates, their parents were just, like pushing them to go and do theater and dance. And I was like, I'm begging, like, you know, like I would have to like really push for it. Um, and also it was expensive, right? Like putting you in these dance things is not cheap. Absolutely. Um, so I really had to push for that. Um, and I do think that my parents just realized like, I love doing this. And so even for college, like I, I, I was like, should I major in theater? My dad was like, no, no, you cannot. Do like, you know, so I said, okay, I'm going to do fashion business. So mm. it's still business daddy It's business, but it's fashion. He said, okay, 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 okay. Like, you know, so that was kind of Look like that. that was your creative that was, approach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the only way I could kind of like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I'm still doing business. So when people ask, what did your daughter go to school for? Oh, she went to business. She went to school for business, you know. <laughs> but she's doing fashion That's brilliant. too. Brilliant. You know? I love that. So I kind of definitely had to maneuver, you know, that way. Way. But obviously, as I've gotten older, my parents are just so supportive of me being a creative and they see this is just what I love to do. And it's always been in me. And so I'm very grateful that, you know, they pushed me to, yes, get an education, but also, you know, promoting me and pushing me in my creative abilities, too. I love it. How has that helped you as an artist, as a creative? You said you grew up in a, in a lot of different backgrounds. You came, you know, yeah. Ghana and yeah. uh, the UK yeah. and then to the BX. That's a lot. Oh, no. That's a lot of different no, things. You know lot. what I mean, right? <laughs> how does that? How did that shape you as a creative and in your yeah. perspective of of how you see things? Yeah, um, I almost see it as like a meal, right? Like when you're cooking, you have all the different ingredients that kind of just make the meal just so good and on, tasty. Julia. You know, like you can't just have the chicken on its own. You gotta right. add the seed. You gotta add the peppers. You got, you know. So I really feel like all of those cultures, honestly, have made me look at life differently, even from a creative perspective. Just being able as an actress to take on so many different, you know, identities or cultures, you know, and just being way more open minded, I think, has really helped my creative ability and the the flavor of it all, you know. And so I think for me, it's been a great blessing to just be exposed to so many different cultures and there's still more that I'm like eager to learn about but I do think that um just having all the different complexities within that culture has really helped shape me um to just see things from a different perspective and just add so much context to like my art you know um so that's been a blessing that's really been a blessing and then the, just the stories that you see right like growing up in the Bronx the things that I've saw and witnessed especially in the 90s like you know it was just such yeah. a different time that I think that you know I remember that so well the music blasting in the summer the fire hydrant yeah. like you know all these things that I think about to being in London and the milkman dropping off milk and like, you know, being, you know, having Ghanaian culture in me and eating with our hands on the floor. Like, you know, all these things I think have been so beautiful to my upbringing that I feel like it's just made me so much more aware and just appreciate culture so much. Um, and that's how I look at it when I come in the creative space, whether I'm producing or acting, I see it all as, you know, just different facets of the creative process. This is what I love about what you just said. You said two key key factors that I think that are important for us. One is the openness. Yeah. And two is the eager to keep learning, yeah. eagerness to keep learning. Yeah. That's important in life. That is mm -hmm. so important in life. 100%. As we approach any situation, we have to be open to what people are giving us mm -hmm. and what we're receiving. Mm -hmm. It works both ways, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and that's what makes us you know, one is creatives able yeah. to give it back in a way mm. where we process it and we're able to let people take things from that too. So it's like yeah. a cycle. Yes. Like yes. a cycle. Yes, exactly. The exactly. eagerness, if we lose the eagerness and the passion mm. for what we do, then what do we have? You have you know, to do something that gives you the eagerness and the passion in your life. And that's so good. And I think about just forever being a student, right? Mm, yeah. Like, I think that's something so beautiful. Like, I think about some of the great actors and actresses, right? And the fact that they are forever students of the craft, right? You just like, said it. You you're just never said going it. to, yeah, like, it's just so yeah. beautiful to learn. And from younger people, older people, like, you know, you just learn from everyone. You, you're so, you're so, like, 
eager to learn, I think that's when you're set up for success. But when you Absolutely. feel like you've mastered it, then I don't think you're able to grow in that space. There's a lot of learning to be done, even in the failures. And that sounds, that's a yes. cliche, but it's so yes. true. It's 100%. so true. It's it's like, if you take a job, you know, okay, so I get a job. I'm not the lead character. I might be, mm -hmm. you know, not even, you know, the supporting. <laughs> right. I take just a one line. There's mm -hmm. so much still to be learned there if you're yeah. open and if you're eager. Yes. Yes. They all work together. They yes. all work together. And you said something early and I said that, and I thought that was so profound, even in life. Right. So even if you're listening or watching and you're not a creative, this is just something you can apply to your everyday life. Right. Absolutely. Like it's just so important as a student of life, mm -hmm. like growing and learning from past relationships or past mm -hmm. failures or whatever that looks like. Like it's just super important to constantly be learning. And I think that's the beautiful thing about life. Right. Like it's just it's so beautiful. It absolutely is. And I would have to, I would have to almost say that everybody in life is a creative in some way or another. Mm. You're always thinking of whether you, you have a nine to five job that's mm. dealing with tech, you're, you're still, yeah. you know, thinking outside the box to make situations work. So we're all creatives. We're all yes. artists. And I have to yes. remind people that because I'm not an artist. I'm not. Yes, you are because mm. you're thinking outside the box to make things happen. So mm. you are a creative, you are an artist mm. and we all have to remember that in our lives. That's good. Right. That's so good. That's so good. So what do you, you have a couple of films that you've worked on mm -hmm. yes. as a producer, as an actor. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about one. I think you have one called Lisa. Yes, my baby. Yeah. Oh, Lisa, tell us a little bit about that one. That was my first film acting and producing and doing all of the things in there. And it was just so interesting. I actually worked on it with the director, Kingsley Osei Abra, who's my really good friend. Um, and he is a photographer and he's never done a film either before. And mm. we came up with this really cool idea. I think it was over the, I think it was like right after the pandemic. And um, it was supposed to be just like a little video shoot we, we were supposed to do because we have worked on projects before. And it just spiraled into a whole film. And I think for me, I... I, I loved the entire process of even auditioning people and getting people on the film, helping with the script and being on set. And I tell, do tell, think, people, tell everybody out there who's listening, they, who may not know what the process is. Tell them a little bit yes. about what you do as an independent yes. uh, filmmaker. So that means you paying for everything yourself. Everything. You everything yourself. <laughs> That's right. Anybody paying for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the bills is billing. That's right. Um, so you're paying for everything, self-produced. There's no big company backing you, right? Um, so me and my friend, we paid for everything. And that includes getting the equipment and finding a space. And I think the process of it all is when you come up with a script and you come up with a storyline, right? Um, finding people to fit that role. And then when you find that, right, there needs to be a rehearsal. There needs to be a scouting of location. Where are we doing this at? Where are we filming all of this, right? And that's that's obviously money, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And then there's also one thing that I think people don't realize when you're producing and doing all of it is, aside from just funding it, you also, I, I think, being logistically um, savvy is super important because there's so many people involved, right? Scheduling, what day are we going to film? People have jobs. People are, you know, working and there's so many other factors that are that go into it. Um, so for me, I love that part of it, um, just planning everything, making sure people were eating on set, making sure they're, you know, everything ran smoothly. Um, but I also think it was a little tricky because I also played, which I didn't intend to play the lead, but the director's like, you should do it. You're perfect. You're the and I'm like, oh, come on, I'm producing this thing. I don't want to be in front of the camera. People think, <laughs> oh, she just put herself in front of the camera because it's her film, you know, but he's like, no, you can do it. And I also felt like it was a challenge to be a producer, assistant director, and then be the actor. Actor. Right. Like that's a you know, huge challenge. Huge. Hello. Like yeah. I was like, whoa, like I have to stay in character, but then also get out of character to make sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to do, you know. Um, so that was an interesting dynamic and it was very tiring too. But um, I do think it was such a great experience. Um, and I think it really pushed me, you know, um, outside of my my comfort zone. And I loved it. That's why I say it's like my little baby. And we also did a movie premiere. So aside from that, we were like, we're going to do a big movie premiere in New York City. And we did do that last year. So that was a whole nother planning for it. Um, and it was great. It was it was nerve wracking, of course, because you're like, are they going to get the jokes? Are, does it, is it going to make sense to right. the audience? You know, um, but by the grace of God, they love 
loved it. We were able to put it in film festivals. It was in Yonkers Film Festival. It's been in a few international film festivals. So it's just been really great just to see and receive the feedback on something that you did with like a labor of love. I think that's beautiful because I think we as artists, whenever we create, we're creating for ourselves, but at the same time, we're hoping that people receive the message or they can yeah. take a message away from what we're doing. You know, whether, whether yeah. it's the same message or not, something that's valuable to them or makes them question what we're, what we're talking about. Did you, did you feel that pressure a little bit? I couldn't even watch people watch the movie. I was oh, literally really? like, I could, like, I was so like, like cringed a little I don't know why and then it was like me on screen I'm like I don't want to see this <laughs> like you know um and I'm looking around like are they laughing are they not laughing I'm like, okay they're laughing Ooh, hey, thank God. they got it like you know um and then also I just I also have this thought process with anything that I do right if God puts it on your heart to do it even if one person is impacted that's enough right like you won't I, I don't I don't want to ever think or let people feel like you have to make sure everyone loves it because you might not be everyone's cup of tea and that's okay but I mean, the people that are supposed to receive whatever they're supposed to receive from it, they will, you know. Um, and so that's kind of how I go into it. I think it was just a little bit different because it's like you're in the room with everyone and you're feeling the energy and you're seeing it. And it's just like, uh, right. like, you know, and I'm just naturally like that. Like, I don't I don't want to watch myself or, you know, things like that. I get very shy easily. With I think we, none of us do because we are yeah, like, judge and like, critics. Yeah. So, like, yeah, you feel yeah, you cringe a little bit. <laughs> You know, um, and then you also criticize yourself, right? Oh, we could have done this better. We could have done that. We should have done, you know, I'm constantly like, oh, dang, we could have, you know, done all these things. And that's just naturally as an artist, what you do. And everyone's like, it's great. And you're like, mm, we could have done better on the lighting, you know, um, but it's also beautiful to see it. And I, I'm very proud of it, even though I now look back and I'm like, we could have definitely done that differently. Yeah. Um, but it, it was it was a great project. And I'm very excited about, you know, where it's taken and all the other projects that I've been able to work on by the grace of God. So I'm really grateful. Is there somewhere we can see it now or was yes, the film festival exactly. circuit just the end of it? Yeah, it's in the film festival circuit right now. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the director also decided, he's like, let's just put it on YouTube. So he was, we, we have it on YouTube. So if you search Lisa, the short film, you'll be able to go check it out. So it's a like 30 minute film. Beautiful. I love it. Well, I don't know if you know this, but I uh, I work with the Harlem International Film Festival too, so that might be a possibility. Oh, for nice! You guys. Of yeah. course, that would be amazing. Yeah, that would check be it amazing. out. Check it yes. out. Yes, <laughs> yes. What are some of the other projects you've worked on? I know there was one called Cycles. Uh, yes, yes. So there was another one that we did. So. Um, <clears throat> that cycles film was a project that we actually shot for a conference and it was pretty much about like relationships and like just the toxicity toxicity of it all and I loved playing that role because we um we shot it in two parts so it was like a story of a young girl and then like the older version of her how like what she saw when she was younger kind of now um almost spilled over into her new marriage and relationship. Um, mm -hmm. And that character for me was really fun to play. And I didn't produce, well, actually I did produce that one, but I was not as heavily involved because the cast was really small. It was just me and an actor and um, the young child, which played, um, which was supposed to be like my son. Um, and I, I feel like that movie and that short film was very good because I think it was short, but it was impactful, right? I got to play mm. very, like, an angry wife who, you know, like, just really pushed myself out of, you know, um, my comfort zone in that sense. And I, I loved, I loved Cycles. Again, I think it's also on YouTube. We put it on YouTube so you can check it out. Um, and it's funny, my co-star and Lisa, he also played my husband in, Le in the Cycles film. Mm -hmm. So it was good to kind of work with him again. Um, um, Dylan, he's an actor that he's he's great. He's he's amazing. So I definitely, yeah, I loved Cycles too, and I love the process of it. But it was just so much easier to do that one because I feel like, all right, this is my second rodeo. I think I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> <laughs> so it was nice. It was nice. It was what really do you nice. what do you do when you when you have a role like that? How do you prepare for roles yeah. that are you know demanding mm, a, like that? Mm, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so for me, I definitely um I like it's all mental, right? Like you need to mentally get yourself in that space of what it would feel like to be a wife who's going through this situation, right? Um, I also like to do research. I love to research, I love to watch other films just to kind of like, you know, 
almost like pull from, sometimes I also pull from some of my favorite actors, right? Kind of see and study how they got into a certain role that's different from any other role they've done before. Um, so for me, I think that's really important to just kind of get myself in that space and just take Juliet out, right? Um, I think that's an important thing to do. It's just like a mental thing of putting yourself in those shoes um, so that it feels more organic as opposed to like you're just reading and robotic. Like I think people can sense when it's genuine, you know. Right. I believe that. Yeah. Tell us, do you do stage as well or has your work been mostly I, film right now? Yeah. So I used to do, I was, I was a theater kid, you know, I was, I was a little theater rat. Um, so I definitely used to, I used to do theater. I love theater. I love theater. I think theater people, I don't know if they, I mean, people that know theater, they know, but I think a lot of people don't realize how much respect, like, and how much hard work theater is. You're acting, you're singing, you're dancing, you're doing it live. live you know, I think yeah. film, Um, not to say or just credit film, but you know, you can cut and piece what that can look like, right? You can take a break, you can stop, you can, it's longer, right? But I think the fact and the ability to do something live, you know, um, is just so many factors. What if you're not feeling well that day? What if you have a headache? What if you, you know, all these just human things that happen, but the show must go on, you know? Right. So I, I think theater, I, I, I respect theater actors and producers so much. Um, and I do love it. And I love watching Broadway shows too. So that's another thing. I love it. You have a film that's coming out now. Um, yeah. A new film. It's called My Perfect Attention. Did you like her? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Oh my gosh. My perfect attention. I think by far that was one of the roles that I was like, can I do this? Really? <laughs> Can I do this? Am I cut for this, bro? And it was so good because it really challenged me because, and I'm not going to give away the story. No, you know, tell, tell us a little bit about it because, you know, we may not know. It's, yeah. So it's, I mean, I, it's, it's such a interesting, I think it deals with a lot of um, mental health. It deals with a lot of emotional trauma and things that people go through um, and this sense of connection, I would say. And I think that my character is... Um, Again, I, I don't want to give up too much, but she's a very interesting character. And I think the audience, when they watch it, it's like, who is she? What is like, you know, you, it's a very mysterious movie. But at the same time, I think it has a great um, sense of connection to it. And my character, when I say it was like, I don't know if I could do it and not in a bad way, but I thought about like how interesting the character is. And I'm like, I don't know, can I do this? Like, can I really do it? And I was able to do it by the grace of God so well and everyone loved it, you know. Um, but I thought about it from a lens of like, you know, the way, and the reason why I say that is because I think audience members will be able to identify my character in different areas, right? So like, she'll be able to relate to you in so many different ways and the same thing with um Sydney's character as well too and so I think it's just really interesting and it, it highlights a lot about just like life and death and things that happen um and what people go through emotionally and how that affects you um mentally right um and so that's why I feel like a lot of people will find it very interesting um it's like is it a love story? Is it a mystery? Like, you know, it's it's a very like on the kind of edge of your seat. You don't know what's happening. Um, and it's it's good. I think it's a really good, it's like a little bit of a, a roller coaster of emotions. And so I, I'm very proud of the work and I love how it came out. The cast and crew was amazing. They did an amazing job. Um, and cycles, honestly, I know Sydney's super proud of it, and I am too. I think it's it's been a great, a great, great time. And I think people are really gonna love it. People are gonna love the film. So just so everyone knows, uh, who she's talking about is Sidney Afriye. He's the yes. writer and director. He was yes. on the podcast earlier. For those of you who watch the podcast, you know you we interviewed him. He's uh, season five, episode seven. So make sure you take a look mm -hmm. at his interview as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he mentioned it was about mental health. Why, why would you be involved in something about mental health? Why is that important yeah. to you? Yeah. 
I think that's super important, especially um, in today's day and age, and especially in the the life that we live. I think a lot of times, and I think um, what was kind of like the blessing, I think, that came out of the pandemic is people actually started to take more um, seriously mental health, right? Like before that, I don't think like when you see somebody oh, going to therapy, you're like, therapy, what's wrong with you? Or like, it was right. like a taboo almost, right? And so I think to shed light on the importance of mental health and we exercise every other part of our body, but we don't really talk about our mental space, which is super important and how it affects us, especially with so many things that have just happened in the world. Um, so many things that are going on with technology, social media, like I think there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of expectations on people and there's not an outlet for people to feel like they can talk about it or express it, whether it's through death, whether you're just frustrated, whether you're as a man, you know, you're struggling or as a woman, you're struggling with so many of these things that are just part of life. I think it is important to have a space where people can feel like, you know, if I'm not well mentally, it's okay. You know, it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to say that I don't know why I'm feeling this way about, you know, something that happened to me and how can I actually you know get help um and I think a lot of people for a long time have been suffering in silence and so we really want to be able to break that code especially in the African-American community I think it's been a big taboo right um in the African community especially even now even mental health like, what's wrong with you like right. you know like yeah. Yeah. it's like nobody want to hear that so I think that is important to really shed light on it and let people know it's okay you know it doesn't make you less of a person if you need to go and seek help for something because I think that takes a certain level of strength to identify that you know I'm not okay or even someone else identifying like listen I think you may need help with this area um, and just making it a lot more accessible and a lot more, you know, something that a dialogue that's just easier to have as opposed to feeling like ashamed about it. Absolutely. You said everything. That's a mouthful. And I have yeah. to agree, I can't agree with you more, you know, especially with people of color, you know, with yes. Africans, with African-Americans, yes. Latino people yes. of color. It's, it's you know, yes. it's always been closeted, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so and so next door, you know, his his daughter's touched. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or whatever the yes. situation may be. And they don't want to talk yes. about it. They they hide it away. It's closeted. But it yes. has to be part of our daily routine. Good mental hygiene yes. is important. And everybody who, yeah, everybody who watches this show know that that's a main focus of this show. I have one mm -hmm. night talk with my psychotherapist on here and we talk about it. We open dialogues yeah. and not only open dialogues, we find solutions. Mm. We want people to get mental health, uh, you mm. know, and good mental hygiene. And yeah. awareness, but we want to talk about it. And it's okay yeah. to talk about it with your friends. And mm. as a friend, if you know someone struggling with problems, talk to your friend, talk yeah. to your family members, open up the dialogue, you know, and find ways. It's so good. Yeah. That is absolutely. so good. Yeah, I love that. And I think I just recently learned to be more open and be more transparent about it. And I do think that just with whatever struggles or, you know, like for me, yes, I, I pray about it. I, I take it to God and I pray and I definitely believe in prayer. Um but I also realize sometimes it's just important to just vent it out and yeah. talk to somebody and have a safe space to talk about it. And I don't think it makes you less of a strong person. I used to have this mindset, like if I, you know, if I'm vulnerable, people are going to think I'm weak or I'll, like, that's just not true. That's not true. That's There's the key word. That's yeah. the key word is being vulnerable and being vulnerable with mental health, but being vulnerable in relationships, being yes. vulnerable as a human. Yeah, that's where we find the connection. That's where we solve yes. problems is when we're vulnerable. And when we're open again, we're going back mm -hmm. to all these words that we talked about. Yeah, that's where we find human connection. And what a better space to be in than to have human connection around the world. This would solve so many problems in our world. I know. There would not be as many wars. There would not yes. be as many, you know, everything. Yes. It's the but you human know what? connection. I thought about someone who may be listening and say, well, I have been vulnerable in the past and I got burned. And so that's why I don't want to be vulnerable again. And you put this wall up, right? Sure. Um, and I get it and I understand. But, you know, one thing my mom used to always tell me, she's like, listen, if you had... Um, a bad mechanic, would you say I'm not going to drive my car again? You would find another mechanic. If you had a bad doctor, you wouldn't say I'm never going to go to the doctor again. You would find another doctor. Right. So just because someone burned you doesn't mean I'm never going to do a relationship. You can't use that as a crutch to not, you know, 
move forward in life, you know? And I think a lot of times people live in that old bubble and they live in that 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 trauma of it. And it almost robs you of the joy of today or the next day, you know? It's almost like a, it's like drinking poison. Absolutely. You know? It's um, finding solutions for the what's happening now. You know, yes. if you if things happen to you in the past, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, you need to find a way to, like you said, vent or talk to someone yes. or go talk to a professional or- yes. Now this is this is going to be the conversation of my next one. My night talk with a psychotherapist. There is actually an app now that's mm. based on AI. I'm not going to give away what? too much right now, but whatever it takes for you. If you need to wow. do meditation, if you need wow. to, you know, you know, go take a walk in nature yeah. and collect yourself, or whatever it yeah. takes for you to find the peace again and restore your joy. Yeah. That's what you need to do. There are many ways to do it. I get up in the morning. I meditate. Before I start out mm. on my day, I mm. think I give my gratitude, start yeah. my day. And it's all yeah. the perspective and mindset that we have, but we have to clear up all those problems first. We have mm. to talk about it. We have to. That's the thing. We're moving it's like forward. We're, 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 we're putting on more stuff, but we haven't really clogged out what's, what's here. Exactly. So it's like, we're not completely whole if we're still black with all these things that we haven't identified with because we want to bury it. It's Absolutely. like, no, you have to bring it all out. It's like, like acne, or if you have skin, like you have to take all the gunk out in order for you know your skin to feel smooth and clear. But if you don't go deep and dig out all the impurities, it's just it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Not going to work at all. No, hundred percent. So, you have any other projects coming up, or what else? <sighs> uh, um, you can mention are yeah. you? I know. So I I feel like as a creative, I have a little bit of. You know, my hand a little bit of yeah. um I also have a business that I run and actually started. It's a creative consultant business. It's called Genesis 33, mm -hmm. which I'm so proud of. Um, and I do a whole lot of creative projects on that as well, too. And I work with different clients. So it's been really interesting to also, aside from being a creative, but also help other creatives. Um, so I definitely am super excited about just all the work that I get a chance to do with other people who um are new to this space and trying to figure it out right um so creative in what sense you mean like helping them figure out which direction to go with yeah. what they want to do right so brand management right um consulting brand consulting um i also help with like different photo shoots video shoots and things like that and so i feel like it's it's so cool to be able to assist other creatives in whatever projects they have. Um, there's a few projects that are happening that I'm a part of that I'm really excited about that will launch really soon. Um, and I think I feel like a little creative octopus sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, right, yeah. da, 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 you know, and, right. I, and I also want to encourage someone to never think that you're doing too much. You know, like sometimes I'm like, am I doing too much? Like, you know, it's just who you are. You know, yeah. if that is who you are as a creative and, you know, I, that's what I'm saying. I love business and I also love helping people and I love the creative space. So you can merge that, you know, you can definitely do it all. And I think that um, creating Genesis 33 for me was just a platform to be able to also create my own creative projects, right? Like I was doing it for other people, but I want to be able to create my own, you know, content and films and photo shoots and video shoots and all these little things that I'm like, but I've never seen that done before. I don't care. Like, right. you know, I yeah. can create my own house of creativity, you know? Um, and so I'm just really super excited about that. And I don't think anybody should ever box themselves in. Um, I'm an immigrant. I'm not from this country. My parents are not from this country. We didn't have money. We didn't grow up. Like, so if I can do it, like I know other people can do it, you know? Absolutely. You are definitely an inspiration. Oh, thank and you. please give me the information so I can put it down in the episode yes. notes of this, yes. you know, episode. Yes. Yes. Um, let everybody know how they can get in touch with you. Yes. So you guys can also follow me on Instagram. So my Instagram handle is MS Miss underscore Amwa Vintage. Amwa is my last name. Um, you can also follow Genesis 33 LLC. Um, I'm on Instagram there. And yeah, you can just DM me, connect with me. I'm super open. I'm ready to collaborate. And yeah, just I'm, I'm very grateful. And I'm and I love supporting other people, too. So let's let's do it. I love that. I'm going to be calling you after this because I need some. <laughs> One on. Mike Knight needs some help too, so we're gonna we're gonna collaborate. Let's do but it. I also want to have you back for One Mike Knight talk where we can talk yes. about entrepreneurship and yes. things like that. So please, go I would back. love that. I would love that. I would too. Everybody, please, within the sound of my voice, make sure you follow Juliet Amwa, uh -huh. 
Yes. And <laughs> I want to thank her for coming on the show. Please like the episode down below. Yes. Make sure you join the One Mike Night Facebook community. Drop yeah. your flyers and information on the Facebook page. That's what it's there for. One Mike Night has been around for 17, going on 18 years. And wow. It's the biggest wow. platform for artists to thrive. So thank you guys all for that. My name is Marcos Luis. Please slide on into the DMs. M-A-R-C-O-S-L-U-I-S. The show is One Mike Night. O-N-E-M-I-C-N-I-T-E. LLC. So let's check it out. Thank you all for joining me. Please like the episode below and share, share, share. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you.